in the corridor at the President's Council meeting in Montreal, and I have a special treat for you right now. You know what? I used to be a member of Parliament back a long time ago, and I actually was a Conservative then. Not one of these Conservatives, a progressive Conservative, which is a whole different kind of animal. But when I was a freshman uh, MP, um, one of the people that I interacted with a lot was a fresh person, Liberal MP, and we did a little TV panel. And I'm so delighted to see her again here in Montreal. It's Mary Clancy. And Mary, you and I were MPs back in the long, distant, mists of time. It was great, wasn't it? 88 when we began. Yes, indeed. It was great. Lots of fun. When we were, our show was called The Rookie Report. Yeah, indeed. Well, now uh, we're no longer rookies, no. but uh, you are now, you're still active in the party, of course, and uh, you are a riding association in Halifax. Yes, indeed. Riding Association Press. It's Tuesday night. Uh, well, congratulations. Thank you. And I said that I had now held every job that uh, the riding had to offer, starting out at 18 when I used to sweep the gym and make the coffee. <laughs> All right. Now, you've been here at this, uh, this Congress for the last day and a half or so. Generally, how's it going? I think it's terrific. I think there have been several things. The program, of course, has been very good and varied, and it gives the kind of information about fundraising, organization, communications that I know you're going to be part of later. But... On top of that, the real benefit for something like this is it gives the presidents from Alberta the opportunity to hear from the presidents from the Atlantic. It's the interaction uh, among riding presidents so that we see that we are a family and a cohesive group from coast to coast to coast. I think the other thing that was terrific was our leader's speech yesterday. I've a long-time fan of Stefan's. I was briefly, well, not briefly, five years, Consul General in Boston. And when Premier Bouchard used to come and do a sort of separatist run through New England, I would phone Stefan and he would come down and bat clean up. And I have seen Stefan get standing ovations at uh, the Harvard and the University of Maine and Chambers of Commerce throughout New England. And I saw that Stefan yesterday, which tells me he's comfortable, he's found his feet in the leadership and I think he also gave us the mantra which every writing president will take home which is we cannot let these people change the face of Canada. Now Mary of course we're here on a weekend that marks the first anniversary of Stefan Stephane Dion's win. The guy has been under relentless attack. The Conservatives have spent literally millions of dollars tearing him down mm -hmm. saying he's not a leader. The media's around here looking for anyone who's got a little whisper of doubt about the yeah. guy. Have you seen any of that here? Do you feel that there's any challenges to his leadership? I was so delighted not to see that. I think there is not, at this meeting, any kind of anti dion feeling. I think his speech yesterday really, really whipped up the troops. I saw, for example, Michael Ignatieff, who constantly gets accused of this. I don't believe that, knowing Michael as I do. He, too, was incredibly supportive. I know that Martha Hall Finley, Gerard Kennedy, all of these people are supportive. Scotty Bryson, I mean, it is a party that's united. It's behind him. They spent all that money. They needed to spend that money because he's a tough guy and they're not going to get him. He's coming back. or he's, he's back. Yesterday showed us he's back and we're ready. We're ready to go. Now, I hope we won't have to go in the snow drifts, but whenever. And I think this party is united. Now what we've got to do is make sure that every riding has its money raised, has its organization in place. And I just say this as a plea to uh, the people who do this, have those riding packages ready for us to put up on lawns. <laughs> Good. Now uh, the media also says, you know what, you liberals, you don't stand for anything. All you've done is oppose Mr. Harper. You've sat on your hands in the House of Commons to prevent an election happening. Our critics have been rather vociferous in saying, well, what do you stand for? Do you feel there's a policy void or a vacuum void here? Do, have you had enough glimpses here at this meeting to make you feel comfortable that we actually are going to go into the next campaign with something of substance? I think that we're going to go into the next campaign with a terrific platform. I'm really exercised and excited about Bob Ray and Scott Bryson and the work they're doing. I know that the work that's being done uh, by our Vice President for Policy uh, in Nova Scotia, Carolyn Scott, who's a candidate in uh, Dartmouth Eastern Shore, I know how much work is being done. And what do you mean we don't stand? I mean, I know you're not saying this. We do stand for things. We stand for, for example, not letting Canadians who are condemned to death in other countries 
being deserted by their country. We stand for a country that is humane and compassionate. We stand for a country that's going to give the best and a fair treatment to our aboriginals. We stand for a country that's going to do something about early childhood education and child care and helping parents. You know, we don't stand for giving tax cuts to the rich. That's true. Wow. So, um, you sound like but you're... I have no opinions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, that's changed. Okay, so am I going to see you in the House of Commons again sometime? Well, you never know. Uh, I might think <laughs> about it. We'll see. Ah, I think that's a yes. From Montreal, I'm Garth Turner. Thanks for watching MPTV.